Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is uh, my good friend, John Jantz. Uh, John's been called the world's most practical small business expert for consistently delivering real-world proven small business marketing ideas and strategies. Uh, he's the creator of the Duct Tape Marketing System, maybe you've heard of it, uh, and the author of multiple books, including uh, The Referral Engine, Duct Tape Marketing, The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur, and his upcoming book, the ultimate marketing engine. Uh, we actually, so funny, funny story. Uh, so John and I have known each other for years and I was asking for people about books on referrals so that we can grow our referral program at self-publishing school. And John's book was one of the ones that just kept coming up, which is hilarious because it's his book, the referral engine, because it's about <laughs> how to get more referrals. So I figured if, uh, if he could get his referral book referred, <laughs> Uh, that frequently and the book is probably pretty good. We ended up reading it um, for our, uh, the whole company read it as part of our book club. So we got everyone copies. They loved it. Uh, it's, it's still one of the favorites. Uh, so John's awesome. Today we're going to be talking about uh, duct tape marketing ideas for promoting your book. We're going to talk about how to generate more referrals with the, using your book. And that's something I really love talking about. Uh, and then lastly, uh, some things he's used or he's learned kind of, he's published a bunch of books. And so what has he learned and how is that uh, changing and evolving with the launch of his upcoming book that launches this year. So John, great to have you here. Hey, thanks Chandler. Great to see you and uh, be with you. So uh, first off, why books? Why are they such a huge part of your brand, your business? I mean, you've published a bunch of books and it seems like they're, they're at the core of, of what you do. So why is that? Well, I, I, I think that, you know, I didn't make this up. I mean, it's a pretty proven, uh, you know, principle that that somebody who has a book, you know, is is considered or, or often seen by uh, other folks as an expert. It's a it's a great way to you know for somebody to try in a lot of ways what it might be like to work with you by by kind of reading your point of view, especially in my books, which are very how to you know it's basically just what we do. I'm, I'm distilling into books, so it gives people a, a really you know deep look into what it might be like uh, to work with you. And and you know, frankly, I, I mean. 12, 15, 18 bucks uh, to, to get kind of a distillation of somebody's life work, I think is uh, their, their books are just a great uh, bargain as well. And, and the ironic thing about it is, of course, by, you know, by having that 12, $15 calling card, if you want to call it that uh, out there, it actually allows you to charge more for your mm. service because somebody has, you know, you've built trust, um, you know, other people, you know, referred your book to, you know, to somebody. So consequently, it's like, well, I've got to hire you. Yeah. As they say, the root word of authority is author. <laughs> and it's hard to be an authority without being an author in a lot of cases. And I call it $15 mentor. Uh, it's, it's all the smartest, most successful people have written a book for 15 bucks. A few hours, you can read it. And like you said, not only does it help you as the author help more people, <laughs> but also charge more, increase your prices, grow your business faster, uh, all those things. So John, can you walk through, I know, I know this is a big question, but kind of at a high level, what is the duct tape marketing system? And then maybe more specifically, how can authors use this method um, to sell more books? Well, I think the biggest thing, if, especially uh, when it comes to selling more books, is the duct tape marketing system is a point of view. Uh, so it's not like, here's the latest, greatest thing. It's, it hasn't changed. The point of view is that marketing is a system. It starts with strategy before tactics. Um, now, the, the tactics themselves have evolved. I mean, I, you know, I started writing about and, and marketing, uh, helping uh, small business owners market before we had the internet. Uh, so, you know, that uh, few things have changed, but fundamentally, you know, what we're trying to do, differentiate our business, stand out to, you know, who's going to be an ideal client for us. And none of that's really changed. It's just how they buy, how they get their information. Those things have changed. But having a solid point of view and sticking with that point of view that allows you to differentiate yourself um, is uh, is really key. Um, obviously, the book you know plays a role in that because it allows you to tell the story in a very deep way. And so, when you you say strategies over tactics, what does that mean? As and as an author, how do I distill that into kind of you know formulating my my strategy for selling more books? So the tough thing about that particular word, of course, if you Google the word marketing strategy, you will be greeted with a list of 57 marketing tactics you know, to grow your business. So <laughs> even Google doesn't understand what, what marketing strategy is, but essentially for us, uh, before, you know, people come to us every single day, I need a website, you know, I need content, I need SEO. Yes, you do. You need all those things, but we're going to back up 
And we're going to build a foundation for your marketing that, that first of all, understands who makes uh, and consequently who does not make an ideal client or customer for your business, your core point of difference. And that's not just a matter of saying, yeah, we'll, we'll wear purple t-shirts and that'll be our difference. It really is what's the value, what's the problem that you're already solving for that ideal client in a way that maybe you can't even articulate, but I bet they can. <laughs> Then we're going to talk about uh, developing. I mean, content is really air, you know, for marketing today. It's not a tactic. It's it's the voice of strategy. So we're going to talk about a plan for how we're going to use content for then every stage of the customer journey. Something we uh, a proprietary uh, approach, or at least label to the customer journey that we created called the marketing hourglass. That 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 really um, acknowledges the fact that that most marketers stop at you know when somebody says they want. To, to buy from you. Um, but our customer journey suggests that there, there's seven phases, no like trust, try by repeat and refer. And, and half of those stages have happen after somebody becomes a customer, because, you know, to your point of, of my you know, previous book, the referral engine, I mean, that's really the goal of, of all marketing is to have, you know, raving fans that are, that are generating leads for you. So by having that framework and, and really communicating, I mean, what, what I just shared with you, I've probably said 2000 times uh, because it, it really, you know, it, 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 we stopped chasing the idea of the week and we just, we, you know, come up with something that is, that, that you know, sometimes this is luck. I think in my particular case, um, you know, it's just what I believed was the right approach, but it still floors me today that very few, it is a huge differentiator <laughs> to start with developing a strategy before you just start saying, well, should we be on Facebook or, you know, could, should we have pop-ups on our website, you know, which is kind of where everybody else goes first. Yeah, <laughs> John, I love this. And we, we, we hundred percent see eye to eye on this. And I think you just kind of, you said you, you've talked about this uh, 2000 or whatever times. And so you just kind of flew by like a bunch of big concepts. So we've got the, I think it was a no like trust, uh, try by refer, try by, you, you, repeat. try by repeat refer. You talked about the hourglass framework. You talked about the referral engine piece, which we'll, I really want to kind of zero in on that a little bit later in the interview. And so a lot of core things, if you were to maybe put it on a bumper sticker or, or, or even just kind of a, a three to five step, whatever uh, uh, framework specific to authors, what would you say? So uh, I'm writing this book. I want to launch it. I want it to be successful. I'm not going to just jump to the tactics piece, <laughs> but the true strategy. What are your thoughts on uh, what you would recommend in terms of developing that strategy? Well, I, I think, you know, in this this is harder than it sounds. I mean, you asked me to do the bumper sticker, which, you know, kind of belies the fact that this is a lot harder than it sounds. Uh, but, but to me, the, the key is to, to truly understand what problem your book is solving and for whom. Um, I mean, that really gets down to it. And it's not, I mean, nobody wakes up and says, I need another marketing book, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, I need to figure out, you know, how to rank higher in the search engines than my competitors do. I need to figure out, you know, how to not charge, you know, undercharge for what I sell. I mean, those are the problems that people are trying to solve. So, so what problem or, or core set of problems um, are you trying to solve with this book and for whom? That's great. And that's the starting point. And so, and I think that's yeah, so I, important. You know, so having, so I was going to say, having said that, I write, you know, how-to books for marketing. I mean, if you're writing, uh, if you're writing fiction, um, you know, it, it's, you know, where do you, you know, what, what problem <laughs> does your book solve for somebody who's looking for a book on fiction? I mean, it's just, it's really the same, you know, practice. It's just a, a different set of human conditions. Yeah. And, and for any of the fiction listeners or, or viewers, the thing that we talk about all the time from a fiction perspective is the pain that you're solving is entertainment. Uh, and a lot of times genre gaps, right? So maybe there's a gap in the genre that you know, because you're a reader of that genre. You're like, I really wish that there was this type of fiction with this angle or this point of view, or gosh, we've got another episode with uh, Rami Vance, Ari Vance on the tier ones, the, all that stuff. So if you're looking fiction, that'll be a better episode. I I'd love to go, John, and just use your new book as a case study of exactly what you just said. So the ultimate marketing engine, can you walk us through like, kind of how you thought about, Hey, what's the, what's the problem that you're solving with that book? Right. So, so I didn't, you know, I mean, after you, this is my seventh book. And I mean, after a while, you know, you got to stop not saying the same thing, you know, in, <laughs> in a different way. 
Uh, so, so I signed the contract for this book with uh, HarperCollins uh, leadership, uh, who's going to publish it, um, on March, about March 8th and of 2020. And about seven days later, we know the world kind of came to, <laughs> to a halt. Um, and, you know, a lot of us, a lot of marketers, you know, we're really scrambling around, like, what's going to happen? What do we do? You know, how do we take care of our clients? And one of the things that, so, and, and frankly, I was thinking, what am I going to write about, you know, <laughs> in this book now? Because it's really being colored by what's going on. And I don't want to write a marketing in the time of COVID book. Nobody wants, nobody wants that anymore. They wanted it for about six weeks, but they don't, <laughs> they don't want it anymore. Um, and so uh, one of the things that really struck me was that I had a lot of clients. I mean, some really by no fault of their own. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we just got decimated. Uh, but then I also had a lot of businesses, a lot of clients whose industries really uh, were struggling, but they weren't. Um, and to me, the, the, the thing that became painfully clear that, and it's always been true, but I think sometimes when, when you shine a really bright light on it, <laughs> Uh, you get to see is that the, the, the clients of mine that that did really well maintained and in many cases grew during what was a you know, challenging time for other businesses were the ones that meant something to their customers, not just they weren't just filling a transaction, they weren't just a place to go because it was convenient, their customers wanted them to survive their customers wanted to support them in what they saw was a tough time. So this book is really all about I mean if there's a sub text to this book, um, it's, it's about, you know, how do we design businesses with a customer success track in mind? Because that's, that to me was what these businesses different, did differently. And what I mean by that is, instead of just saying, you know, the, one of my favorite examples that's in the book is a remodeling contract. Instead of saying, you know, we, you know, we fix kitchens or, you know, we, whatever it is that we do, their whole point of view is, that they look at, they look at a customer and say, okay, here's where they are today, but where do they want to go? Where do they ultimately want to go? Um, here's where, you know, here's the stage they're in in their life. Here's the stage that they're in in, in their, you know, home buying or home uh, remodeling journey. But what do they ultimately want? And they design their entire business and process and and even product and fulfillment around the the uh, identifying the stages and the milestones that are going to take people from where they are to where they want to go. So, so that idea of the customer success track is one that I've been applying now to really every type of business. And, and the innovation in it is, it's not just, they're not just the best at what they do or what they say they do on their business card. They're, they're the best at growing with their customers as opposed to just going out and getting more customers who, who mm. want to more of the same. Mm, that's great. And I love that philosophy. So John, where would you, using the framework that you mentioned just a little bit ago, what, what would you identify as, that pro, as, the, as the problem that you're solving with that book? And then how, does, how do you use that problem to shape, I mean, the title, the, the subtitle, the hook, kind of all those things? Yeah, so, so the big problem that that book addresses is the fact that so many people are you know, trying to work with everybody. They are you know, maybe successfully working with a, you know, a large swath of the market. But I believe they... they they could be ultimately be more successful and way more profitable if they would actually narrow their focus down to about their top 20% of their clients and build that customer success track for, with them, for them, with the idea that, that you're then going to grow with that group of customers instead of, unfortunately, you know, wasting a lot of your time on folks that, yeah, you can serve them, you know, but, but they're never really going to be that perfect customer. What I found is that, that when I could get people to really focus on that perfect customer and then start asking themselves, what could they do more for them? You know, how could they grow with them, with their entire ecosystem? You know, referrals are a big part of this book because it, it what we do is we focus on that 20%. We, we make them so successful that, that, that they actually want to be a partner. We, I actually talk about this idea of customers as members, you know, as opposed to uh, simply, you know, transactions. Um, and, and that, you know, what happens is, uh, the growth that comes from working with their entire ecosystem is so much more profitable than just going out there and, and chasing somebody else down who says, okay, yeah, I need what you do. That's great. You, John, you, you uh, kind of talked about the ultimate goal of, of customers as members and actively referring business. What are your thoughts on, you know, how can authors who are also entrepreneurs or maybe even Aspiring entrepreneurs, existing entrepreneurs, how can they use their book as part of their own referral engine? 
and, and use a, use a book to drive referrals for their business. Well, so I see a lot of businesses do this and, 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 or I should say a lot of authors do this uh, effectively. And I think sometimes people hesitate uh, to do this because there is sort of an upfront time and, and monetary cost. But one of the most brilliant strategies I've seen people uh, do is, you know, they, they, they identify uh, somebody that, you know, maybe they have a connection with them or, or they can, uh, you know, develop a connection with them and they, they give them. 25 books and say, look, I'd love for you to share this with whoever you want. I mean, obviously you want to get agreement. Don't, you know, you just want a box of books showing up with no context, but, but, but they, they basically say, look, I'd love it if you would, you know, I, I respect your work. I'd love it if you, you know, if you thought this book was a worthwhile read that, that you'd pass it out to, you know, your customers, your, you know, network, um, and just, you know, with, with some word of encouragement. And, you know, for a lot of folks that that could be a great way to sell more books because, you know, that influential person might have very influential clients who can buy, you know, or refer the book to, to thousands of people. If you are trying to get work from that, it's, it's, you know, it's a great uh, a calling card. I, you know, I have a, a network of consultants who actually license our, our methodology and our systems and we collaborate as a network. And I mean, they use duct tape marketing, you know, like crazy as a calling card for their business uh, because it, um, you know, it, 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 you know, it articulates for the ones that will read it. Uh, let's face it, some people won't pick it up and read it, but they're like, oh, you got a book, you must be smart. Um, <laughs> but uh, for the ones that actually read it, it does a great job of explaining how working with that consultant is going to be a different experience than you've ever had. Mm, that's great. So it's a differentiator. Are there any other ways that, that, that you have used or currently use your book kind of embedded in what you do to embed in uh, referrals? Well, we use it a lot um, for, and, and again, I'm not, I, I'm, I wish I could tell you some, you know, amazing secrets. A lot of people do some of the stuff I'm talking about, but, um, you know, in, in the fall when, uh, in September of 2021, when uh, my next book comes out, you know, I'm speaking at about 10 events in September and October already. And, you know, most of those events are uh, purchasing books uh, for attendees. Um, and, you know, why I love that one is because, you know, I, I, I'm at a point where I do charge a fee, you know, for my speaking, but I'm waiving that to sell books. You know, it's kind of a win for me. And it's really a win for the event because they not only get, you know, what they hope is a, a great presentation uh, for their attendees, they get something tangible to put in their hands as well. So, um, you know, that's a strategy that, that, you know, most, um, you know, authors uh, that, that do any kind of speaking uh, employ at some level. Yeah. And then, so then not there's, you're building in the virality, right? Not only are hundreds, maybe in some cases, thousands of attendees getting a copy of the book, you're teaching the methodology, and then they're now going out as advocates of that book with book in hand. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it, it, it's a, it's a win, win, win kind of all, all, uh, all around there. Well, and I've, you know, I've done a lot of work with, I, I, I love manufacturers and um, distributors. Uh, because they all have large networks of clients that they want to help. They know that if their clients can be successful, they're, uh, they're going to buy more product from them. Um, and so I have on many, many occasions pitched doing webinars for, you know, a group of distributors, you know, clients and that uh, they, you know, they will buy books for all of the, uh, you know, attendees really cheap for them. I mean, they spend a couple hundred bucks. They get me to come for 45 minutes and educate. And, you know, in many cases, you know, uh, we develop client relationships with then their distributors. Win, win, win. Love it. Uh, so John, you said you're about uh, seven books in, what would you say are top two or three things um, that, that you've learned either strategy or tactics um, that have, that have sold the most books kind of so far? Well, it's that, that partnering with, with organizations that, you know, that, that want to do training or want to do teaching, you know, to their, you know, locating those folks and developing relationships with them, um, you know, has probably been the biggest thing that, that I've done that, that you don't see everybody doing uh, necessarily. Um, and, and that, that was such a win because it, it just, it turns into book purchases, but it also, you know, every time I do one of those, you know, we get an inquiry, you know, for, for marketing consulting as well. So, yeah, that's so, great. you know, so, so that's probably the one I, I will say a couple of points, um, you know, that I've over this, you know, seven books, my first book came out in 2007. Um, and, you know, I, to, to, to give people, anybody who's a little discouraged, 
uh, to give somebody a little encouragement, uh, it's gotten a lot harder. <laughs> the, the, that's one thing that, you know, not enough people say. I mean, they're, they're probably 10 times the amount of books, 10 times the authors, uh, 10 times the opportunities to get, you know, really great content uh, that, that didn't uh, exist, you know, 15, 14 years ago. So one of the things that I, I think has really happened, and this has happened in pretty much every channel of marketing, is it's not enough to just have that book. I think you have to really surround that book with a lot of assets, um, additional assets, especially, especially, I mean, if your whole goal is to sell a million books, you know, then, then focus on selling a million books. But if your whole goal is to build a brand around that mm. book, then you need, you need a free course on the front end. You need a 199 course on the back end. You need a $1,500 a month coaching program to go with it. I mean, that's, uh, I think, how you really take a book and you kind of create this whole ladder of, of assets around it. That's great. So, John, I'm kind of in the home stretch here, and I, I want to, I've got a quick question on self publishing versus traditional publishing. And, and then I'd love to hear more about your upcoming book. What are you doing differently to launch and stuff like that? But first, so, uh, you know, I think you've got, I think you're mostly traditionally published. I was doing some digging. I think one, maybe two self published. And then I've noticed it's Penguin, HarperCollins, Wiley and Son, so different publishers. Yep. So I think it's just such a great case study for folks on publishing with different publishers and self-publishing versus traditional publishing. So how do you think or make the decision on, do I self-publish this book or do I traditionally yeah. publish it? And then also any tips that you've learned kind of for authors from working with different publishers? So the first one, self-published versus, you know, traditional publishing. I mean, quite frankly, traditional publishers, there's very few of them left. <laughs> They've consolidated like crazy. So, you know, one of the considerations might be, is a traditional publisher even interested in, in your work? And I, I hate to say it, um, in most cases, they, if you can prove you can sell a whole lot of books, they'll be interested. Otherwise, it's a little, little tougher slog these days. Um, so, so that's the first one. You know, you met, self-publishing may just be your first best avenue. Um, but I really also think it comes down to uh, objectives. Uh, I, I mean, a, you know, if you really think about it, selling, um, you know, selling 50,000 copies of a traditionally published book, you know, will probably net you about 75 grand. <laughs> so, yep. you know, if you're doing it to make a bunch of money, you know, that's, that's kind of the math on that. Um, but if, you know, selling 10,000 books yourself, <laughs> which then be, give you the absolute ability to white label the book, you know, put a sponsor message in it, you know, do a million different things, you know, then they, and, and totally retain control, including control of the audio, you know, portion of it, um, you know, that, and, and again, that might be, you know, that might be the best path for you because it gives you more opportunities to bundle and repackage and, and do things. Now, uh, you, if you sell 10,000 copies of a self-published book, you wouldn't be the first person that then got the attention of a, uh, of a traditional publisher as well. That, that certainly happens. We all know examples of that. Uh, but I, I think the biggest thing that self-publishing does is, is you retain total control over how you want to do that book. I mean, we, you've probably had folks on your show, you know, I gave that example of the, uh, uh, of the distributors and things, you know, had I self-published duct tape marketing, I could do pretty easily, you know, <laughs> duct tape marketing with a cover, you know, that had uh, their, you know, that manufacturer's logo on it. Mm, um, so yeah. you know, that's that, and that, that's you know, that's a, it's, it's like selling coffee mugs, right. You know, <laughs> but it's a book uh, yeah. with, with their logo on it. And uh, you know, I think, uh, tremendously valuable. So there's, um, I, I don't know if you want me to name names, but, but, but Phil Jones is a great example. Um, exactly what to say is his book. Yeah. Um, and he is sliced and diced uh, on top of selling a lot of copies of it himself. He has sliced and diced that a million ways and, and variations and, and bundles uh, that, you know, that, that are actually probably more profitable in some cases than, you know, the tra traditionally uh, published book ever would be. That's, a, that's really interesting. Uh, on that note, John, so tr if we if so, that's the self publishing versus traditional publishing. If we're thinking uh, you know strictly traditional publishing, if that's the route that folks are choosing, they want to take. How do you choose which publisher to use? And knowing what you know now, is there any lessons learned of like uh, you know different publishing houses and better yeah. or worse experiences or yeah. things that you've learned? So so. Um take some of this with a grain of salt. When I started in 2007, there were a lot more publishers. Um, I actually was able <clears throat> to, uh, 
to land uh, a, an agent who has now turned into a very, very high profile best-selling author himself uh, agent. Um, and, and that's a huge advantage for getting, you know, your books into places. Um, so, you know, that doesn't, you know, there aren't as many agents because not all publishers even care if you have an agent, you know, anymore. It used to be you wouldn't even get in the door unless you had an agent that had some clout, um, but that's no longer really the case. But so in my particular case, um, that not only uh, allowed me to get, you know, as a first time author, you know, a, a really pretty good deal. Um, it, it actually allows me to shop my next projects around. Um, you know, most traditional publishers will, will uh, have in their contracts that they give first right of refusal. So you come to them with your next book, say, here's what I'm thinking. And if they go, eh, I don't know if that's for us, you shop it around. Uh, if you've had any success at all, <laughs> you know, you can basically say, here's what my last book did. Um, and it's pretty easy for somebody to say, okay, I'll take a shot on you. So in my particular case, my first book was published by a company that then got bought up and, you know, actually went back into Christian publishing only. And so it was really not an option to go back to them. I landed with portfolio for three books um, and had a really great uh, experience with them. Um, my next book I wanted to write was totally different. It's called The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur just they didn't get it at all it did, you know it didn't seem like any of my other books they took a pass which in my uh, particular uh, situation was great because uh, you want a publisher who's excited about the work not just excited about what you can sell um, mm. so uh, that was with Wiley um, and I you know the, the, they work they, all these publishers work a little differently the thing I did like about Wiley is they were a lot faster I mean we put that book together contract to ship in 12 months uh oh you know, wow <laughs> harper Collins, well especially since i had to write it all in you know <laughs> 108 000 words in 90 days wow. um but uh and then my next book uh, is with harper collins leadership and they are much more methodical um i think they're actually probably a little more process driven and so far the experience has been great uh with them uh but you'll find you know, a couple things. I mean, if I could throw out some tips, you know, all contracts are completely negotiable. Um, all kinds of elements. What I love to do is a couple of cases, I've retained the audiobook rights. They didn't seem to care. Uh, that's not as easy anymore because everybody realizes people are buying more audiobooks than anything. But, uh, you know, that's up for us. When, when I sign a contract, you know, they'll typically the standard boilerplate thing is you get 10 copies, you know, delivered to your door. When I was like, no, give me 500. And they're like, okay, <laughs> you know, because I'll use those in all the ways we've, uh, we've talked about. So, you know, if you are going to go with a traditional publisher, um, you know, at least seek out somebody who's done a couple deals and say, what are all the things I can ask for? Uh, because stuff that doesn't really cost them money, like couple hundred books at the end of a run, um, you know, is easy for them uh, to say yes to. Um, know this, you will be really, unless you have a, you know, very big name, um, uh, or you are writing a book that is on a, like an incredible news hook, um, you will, uh, you will do a lot of the marketing yourself, uh, self-published or traditionally published. Know, know that that's going to be a, a lot of that's going to be on you. That's great. Anything else that you negotiate contract specific? That's good. I love those tips. Um, you know, depending of, and depending upon the, the the books, foreign rights are you know really negotiable. Um, some of the bigger houses have great relationships with foreign publishers, and they, you know, a couple of my books sold, you know, foreign rights before they were even out, um, and uh, you know that's that's nice because it's pretty easy money. You don't ever see royalties from those, or at least I don't. Maybe it's because the book didn't sell billions, but you know, I get I get advances for those. Um, but I don't get, you know, I, there's nobody in China that's reporting here's how many books we sold of duct tape marketing uh, back to to the publisher. And I think a lot of them know that too in the business publishing world, so they just take the money up front. Um, but but those if you've you know if you're working with a smaller publisher or if you're self-published, uh, there are places that uh, you know that that will be interested in your book. Uh, just a little you know, a little extra legwork, but uh, you know that could be you know I've I've seen people uh, that that you know will sell um, you know twenty thirty forty thousand dollars worth of rights um, you know and and same thing they 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 do the translations they you know they design the cover and do all the work. Um, the other thing, uh, it would be derivatives. Uh, so, 
in the, in the business world, I think there's a lot of opportunities, particularly for, um, you know, consultants um, that, that, you know, are trying to get work off of uh, their book to actually say, okay, here's my main book. You know, here's the main concept, but I can niche this book down for these five industries. And the reality is you're changing the cover, you're changing the case studies, you're changing, you know, some terminology. Uh, but, you know, that's another thing that, um, that if you go with a traditional, if you self-publish, you can do it all day long. But if you go with a traditional publisher um, and you have that in mind ahead of time, um, most of them just have kind of restrictions. I mean, you obviously can't just take the work and, you know, put another word in the title. Um, you know, you, you've got to actually rewrite parts of it. Um, but that can be a, you know, that could be a great option to, if you have those rights, that can be a great option to sell to partners. So, you know, if I were going to do duct tape marketing for electrical contractors, I might go to the biggest electrical contractor association on the planet and say, look, I'll let you write the forward. Uh, you know, we'll put your logo on it. And, you know, and now it's going to be the, you know, the book for electrical contractors that you put in, you know, in your marketing library. That's smart. John, we're in the home stretch here. Uh, I want to talk, you told us about a little bit about the premise of your upcoming book launching in September, September 21st. Uh, it's the ultimate marketing engine, five steps to ridiculously consistent growth. Uh, can you talk to me about what are you doing differently to launch and market this book kind of based well, on what you've learned from the last few books? So, so the biggest thing I'm doing is I'm, I, the last couple books, um, yeah, I mean, obviously you rely on your house list, you rely on your network, you know, as much as possible, just kind of traditional stuff. But, you know, I've been a podcaster since 2005 and I've had um, over 2000 guests um, on my show. And my last book, uh, The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur, I was on about 300 shows. Um, and there's no question that those sold books, but I've never been very good at the old call to action. Um, thing. And so sometimes, I mean, it's like, yeah, go, you know, here's the Amazon link. Hope you, hope you buy one. Um, so I, I'm really going all in on podcasts again, but I'm going to do it in a, uh, in a way. In fact, Chandler, I would publicly invite you to uh, consider this if, uh, if it sounds uh, interesting, but I'm creating a, a, a course that is, you know, some premium content that uh, if you buy a copy of the book, you get free access to this content. Uh, but I'm going to, you know, courses and, and, you know, websites now are so easy to clone. <laughs> and so I'm going to really offer that to every podcaster to allow them to actually um, give that course away to their listeners, but also uh, co-brand it. And if they've got something they want to put on there, you know, to, uh, you know, to, to be an extra asset, you know, for their particular, um, you know, their market. Um, so uh, the hope is with that, you know, the, the, the big kind of stretch with that is that, you know, being on somebody's show is great. You know, they'll promote it. They want listeners, um, but having something tangible that somebody can go and get that that has a high perceived value. Um, and let's face it, um, the people that get that course will will have to give us their email address uh, for login. And so it's also an email capture because, you know, one of the things that a lot of authors mistakes a lot of authors make is, um, you know, I, I there are uh, there are you know tens of thousands, probably not hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of copies of the referral engine out there. And I don't know who has any of them. Um, right. And, and I think that that's, uh, um, you know, it's partly the way the, the publishing industry has worked. Frankly, the publishers don't have any idea who has any of them because they sell them all to Amazon yeah. they sell them all to the corner bookstore. And, you know, that's their customer, you know, and, and, you know, as an author, your customer is the reader. So, you know, how can, yeah. how can you get closer to the reader so that you can build a community, you can uh, learn from them, uh, you can, uh, let's face it, you know, offer the, the, that 20% of them uh, that would buy anything from you, you know, now you've got a way to, to reach out to them. That's great, John. And if you're listening or watching, guys, go back, check out the episode with Pat Flynn. Um, he's got a really great episode on this podcast about how to create a companion course and how to use companion courses to, I think it's, gosh, uh, uh, I think he got up to like 40, 50% of opt-ins uh, from the, so John, honestly, that might even be a good one for you to listen yeah. to it as, as you're prepping for your companion courses for the next book. Uh, yeah. Last question or two here. That's, those are great tips. Knowing what you know now, John, what, what would your advice be to the John from seven books ago uh, and the other Johns out there that are about to write and publish their first book? Uh, knowing what you know now? 
So, I, I mean, if, if there's anything that I look back in hindsight and think, ah, I probably should have done that differently. Um, you know, I wrote books to, to write books. Duct tape marketing certainly has been my flagship book. I've built a whole business and brand around it. But my other books, you know, the referral engine, the self-reliant entrepreneur, you know, I, I just kind of put those out there. They sold a lot of copies. Um, but, you know, a year in, two years in, they're still, in fact, 10 years in, you know, the referral engine still sells a nice amount of books, but I didn't do enough to, uh, to keep that brand alive. I mean, that's a separate brand by itself. I, I, I really kind of was all in on duct tape marketing, but those, those brands, you know, are, think of your books as brands. Um, and, you know, John Jantz, you know, can have five brands that are all, you know, kept alive um, by, you know, structuring uh, partnership deals and things like that with people who want to keep them alive. Um, and I, I think that's probably, you know, in hindsight, um, I should have done a, a much better job of, of kind of building those individual franchises rather than kind of going, hey, I'm John Jantz, author, and I'm duct tape marketing. That's great. I appreciate you sharing that. John, you said you don't do the call to action well, but I'm going to ask you to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> where can people go to find out more about you, to buy your books? And most importantly, I mean, you mentioned the companion course. I know this interview is kind of a little bit far out from the, the, the actual launch of the book, but especially where can people go to pre-order uh, your, your upcoming book? Sure. So pretty much everything I've been doing uh, for the last uh, couple decades can be found at ducttapemarketing.com. And that's D-U-C-T-T-A-P-E uh, marketing.com. And just there on the homepage, uh, you'll scroll down a little bit. You'll see all my books, including uh, the, the new book. It'll be out in September of 2021. But as you said, you know, the, the good old Amazons of the world uh, have, uh, you know, will take your uh, credit card today. So, so pre-order it so you can be one of the first people to get it. And, uh, um, and again, I'll, I'll reach out to you again, Chandler, when we have that uh, companion course. That's perfect. And people can, so go to ducttapemarketing.com and I'm sure close to the book launch as well. You can find a link there that goes to um, the, the, you know, to pre-order the book or, or especially the companion course. Like you said, guys, it's called the ultimate marketing engine. It's coming out September 21st of 2021. Uh, John, thank you so much, man. This has been awesome. Yeah, thank you, Chandler. It was great.